a moth event, we may actually see it on the ground. I can see it in my... But there's more to see dancing in there underneath it, I'm sure. Brian. Today we're going to be discussing a tornado that I find to be very haunting yet infamous and not only did it break records but it also changed the way storm chasers would chase storms for the rest of their lives after this day and that is the el reno oklahoma 2013 tornado may 31st 2013 el reno oklahoma being the very last day of may which was a month that had seen so many active and strong storms in the southern plains Unbeknownst to everyone, though, something very unpredictable and unstable was in the works on this particular Friday, and it even had meteorologists totally on edge. To understand where everybody's minds were at and the emotional weight of this day already, it's important to remember just 11 days before this tornado hit, Moore had their EF5 tornado that just completely ravished the town and Everyone was still picking up the pieces in Oklahoma from that storm. They were still cleaning everything up. Everybody was just trying to get their lives back together and move forward. And now, another monster was bearing down, this time near El Reno, Oklahoma. The SPC, or the Storm Prediction Center, had issued a particularly dangerous situation tornado watch, which is a rare and chilling phrase to be used and the setup was textbook violent supercells. Cape value is already approaching 5,000 joules per kilogram and a dry line sharpening over central Oklahoma. Everything pointed to explosive development. And by late afternoon, storms began firing near El Reno and Union City. Needless to say, no one could have predicted just how bad things were about to spiral completely out of anyone's control. At 6.03 p.m., a tornado would touch down just southwest of El Reno. At first glance to chasers and locals in the area, it really didn't look like much. It didn't look like anything to immediately be very concerned about. It was just a developing cone right below a rotating wall cloud. Just really anything that every storm chaser has seen already. Nothing too out of the ordinary. But just within minutes, the storm completely transformed. What was once just a cone-shaped tornado had morphed into a violent, massive wedge-shaped monster. It grew so fast, even, that storm chasers, seasoned storm chasers, were absolutely caught off guard and terrified by the way the storm was acting. It just, it was playing by a set of its own rules, so to speak. Within just 30 minutes, it would become the widest tornado ever recorded at 2.6 miles wide. The tornado's path was basically just totally erratic. It was lurching unpredictably, executing just subtle loops, and from the ground, the visibility was almost non-existent because it was so heavily rain-wrapped, you really couldn't see anything in front of you. You couldn't tell which direction it was going, you couldn't tell the size of this tornado, it was basically the worst case scenario for anybody and everybody on the roads, including storm chasers. Many storm chasers were actually approaching from the south, thinking they had a safe escape route that they could leave at any moment and be totally fine and this tornado was not going to touch them. And unfortunately, they would be wrong. Radar even estimated that winds had exceeded 295 miles per hour, 100 to 200 feet above ground, reaching pretty much near EF5 levels at times. However, the damage path wouldn't basically support that later on, but we're going to talk about that later. On top of all of the traffic congestion, the crazy amount of rain that was coming down and also the debris that was being thrown around was just causing even more havoc for all these storm chasers on the road just trying to survive just trying to get away from the storm even experienced storm chasing veterans were just trying to get out of the way of the storm they just wanted to survive to see another day of storm chasing and among those was tim samaris and team twistex tim samaris was easily to say one of the most 
well-known and respected in meteorology, a former engineer, a data collector, and a very careful, calculated chaser, the exact opposite of what you would call reckless. He wasn't chasing for clicks or footage. He was truly chasing to save lives. Joining him at the time of this chase were his son Paul Samaris and colleague Carl Young. They were planning on deploying probes to collect pressure and wind data from within the tornado's core. This is something that they have done with so many tornadoes in the past and really successfully at that and safely. Though Team Twistex were experts, the El Reno tornado was just so beyond deceptive. While also heavily rain wrapped, they even couldn't escape. Richard Henderson, a local amateur chaser from Oklahoma, would be one of them. Henderson would actually take a super haunting last photo of the tornado before it would unfortunately strike him. It was believed that Henderson was caught in the direct path of the tornado when it unexpectedly changed direction while also increasing in size and speed. You okay? Oh. Yeah, a little bit of blood. Yeah, Are you sure? Yeah, I'm good. You all right? Yeah. All right. All set? I'm glad Dude, that's okay. the scariest 200 yard ride of my life. Yeah, I believe that it. That was, yeah. I thought it was, I, my life left before. Get it. I'm not Get joking. It. Jennifer, from the weather. Everybody duck, go, go, go. Just keep going if you can. Keep going if you can. Everybody duck down. Everybody duck down. Barns were swept away and cars were thrown thousands of feet from this tornado, but the overall path and its damage path just didn't equate to what you would normally see for an EF5 strength tornado when they found out that the rating would be announced as an EF3. An EF3 tornado, at the end of the day, that's what this was rated as. To this day, the EF3 rating for the El Reno, Oklahoma tornado has been just one of the most controversial and heavily debated in the weather community. The enhanced Fujita scale is solely based on damage and not just wind speeds. Let's say if a tornado rips through fields instead of buildings, there may be no actual evidence left behind that could even justify a higher rating. Basically, no way to prove truly how strong this tornado would be at ground level. The El Reno tornado didn't hit a densely populated area like a city or suburbs. There was no real direct EF5 type structure damage. So despite the radar showing nearly 300 mile per hour winds, it was officially listed and rated simply at EF3. Many people in the chasing community and scientific community felt the rating really didn't reflect the nature of this monster. After the 2013 El Reno, Oklahoma tornado, it was easy to say that storm chasing would be forever changed. The deaths of such truly respected and knowledgeable chasers essentially made it known to everyone that no matter how knowledgeable you were and how much you knew about storm chasing, you were never truly 100% safe. This tornado was just so insanely unpredictable. The way it had expanded so violently and moved in ways that totally defied traditional chase logic. The way it this tornado had expanded so violently and moved in ways that defied traditional chase logic, it, it was because of this exact storm that people realized for the first time that the best of the best could be completely caught off guard. It seemed storm chasers became a lot more cautious following the 2013 storm, and chasers started essentially reevaluating their escape routes, their positioning, and whether the footage was even worth the risk. YouTubers, meteorologists, and even just weather enthusiasts alike took a step back for a moment just to reflect after the storm. Following the storm, there would be such an amazing display of tributes, however. Across the weather community, people shared stories and memories of Tim, Paul, and Carl. Who they were, what they stood for, and 
how their work would just live on forever, even if they weren't here anymore, to share that. I think I can speak on behalf of everybody telling the story of the El Reno 2013 tornado is simply a hard one to tell because it reminds us of just how quickly things can go from incredible and fascinating to devastating and irreversible. I myself personally will think about Tim, Paul, and Carl every year when the anniversary of the El Reno tornado comes up. Having watched the show Storm Chasers on Discovery Channel many years ago, I was and am still so enamored by just how knowledgeable and safe they were. As I release this video series during the anniversary of the El Reno tornado, I can't help but reflect on how much this storm just still echoes through the weather community and through me personally. Every year, the date always reminds us of what we lost and who we lost, and how important it is to continue learning and honoring those that we lost. Thank you guys so much for watching. That is a wrap on the El Reno 2013 tornado. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, I really took my time with this one and doing the research and truly a passion project of mine since this tornado happened and since I had this channel. Uh, so I hope you guys will tune in to my next video. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye!